Who is she? We haven't seen her in so many months and now she's just reappeared out of nowhere. Who is she? It's Faye. Hi, how are you? I felt like doing a makeup look. I hope you guys like it. Uh, I'm actually not sure if I like this lighting. Give me a sec. I like that one the most. I feel like that shows off the colours here as much as I can. I thought since I'm going to be stirring trouble, I might as well wear my devil face and call it a fucking day. Um, because I know, I know I'm going to, I know I'm going to start shit here. Even though I don't typically want to, because the main reason for why I was on hiatus was because of the amount of abuse that I was receiving and uh, I just needed to switch off from Twitter, Instagram and YouTube all at the same time. I mean, I've checked in every now and then. I did release a couple of videos, you know, in between, but I have been generally unmotivated to do anything on social media because I have been called fat, ugly and a waste of space, human garbage, you name it, I've been called it in the last few months. And some of you might think, oh, well, she, she was asking for it. She deserved it fine whatever like i if that is the case i don't know why you're here and watching this video considering that you think that i'm hideous not very smart and in incredibly deceitful for whatever you choose to believe that for i don't know why you're here for the record i probably will be moderating comments under this video because i know the type of people that have been spamming literally all of my content for the last couple of months. I've been moderating those comments and I will be moderating these comments. As far as I am concerned, this is my house and I will operate however the fuck I want to operate in my house. So if you don't like that, feel free to blast me on any other social media platform. I will block you, but you already knew that. I left the ex-Muslim community quite a while ago. And I feel like I made a series talking about the problems that I had in the ex-Muslim community. And I kept saying that I've not left the label behind. I still use the label. And I currently do not use the label uh, after a specific incident that probably everyone who follows my ch channel knows about by now. So, I mean, I'll be going over it slightly in this video. But for the most part, I don't feel the need to say anything that I've already said. I don't feel the need to apologize for things I've already apologized for. I don't feel the need to re-clarify what my motive was for making that video, even though a lot of people will make a lot of implications, rely on me and tell me that, that I'm a snake because I told them my family, so how could they expect anything else from me? Harris Sultan, I'm looking at fucking you. So yeah, here's me. I've been doing okay. I recently got a new job. I have been, you know, fixated on my studies. I have an exam coming up and I have some videos planned for June for Pride Month that I wanted to do throughout June, but I did not want to do it without closing this chapter of what is was essentially a year and a half of my life because I do think that a lot of the videos that I made on this channel have been dedicated to the ex-Muslim movement and the things that I was doing within the movement and I don't feel like it's fair on you and for my own sort of sake and, and speaking whatever I need to speak uh, I, I felt like I needed to close it out so that's what I'm doing here today. I'm also going to take the D'Angelo Wallace pledge uh, of making videos in that if I don't feel mentally healthy, I'm probably not going to be posting a video. I'm just going to make videos when I feel like I'm ready to, you know? I have the energy to, when I feel like I have the passion for it. I'm not just going to make videos for the sake of it. I don't feel like that was very healthy for me, <laughs> you know, when I was doing that. and. Um, I mean, we're going to get into a little bit about that later, but my channel has always been about me airing my grievances, telling stories from my life, and kind of trying to decipher meanings and lessons from the things that I've been through, be that with my family, with my friends, with previous relationships that I've been through. And I don't treat this topic any different. You know, this was definitely a part of my life. And anyone who's going to say that this is like an invasion of their privacy, number one, I'm not going to be mentioning any names unless I absolutely have to in this video. I'm not going to be sharing any screenshots or receipts or anything like that, mainly because a lot of the stories that I'm going to talk about 
are stories that were you know private the the conversations that i had privately they weren't you know text conversations and the ones that i did have uh through text i have taken the liberty of not including the text here because something that was a massive criticism of me was that i was invading someone's privacy regardless of the fact that they're a big fat liar and that was more important to me than their stupid privacy i don't think that if you are a hypocrite if you are lying to people if you are hurting people that you suddenly deserve this protection of privacy i don't think that I and like i'm saying this on this platform now and you know my friends understand this my family definitely understand this because i've been talking about my family since i started this channel and i just don't understand the argument if you do a shit thing and you are acting as though you didn't do that shit thing online i'm gonna say that you did the shit thing regardless of who you are and i think that it's really important it's really really important to call out nonsense garbage behavior when it fucking happens and that's why i'm kind of making this i've seen a lot of garbage behavior over the last two years and i want to talk about some stories you know and i think a big example for you know what these people say like when i first did this for someone who is in the ex-muslim community who like i said i'm not mentioning any names unless i absolutely have to and if i go the rest of my life never saying this person's name again i will be a happy camper but when it first happened a lot of people were like oh well you know i can't imagine how they feel regardless of the fact that they had made my life a living hell for like between like three and four months but suddenly you know i've told people that this has happened to me and and suddenly i'm the bad guy it's the same with like my aunt sending me like a bunch of mean texts about how i'm a fat whale and i'll never be happy because i've left islam and i tell that on the internet and everyone's sympathizing with my aunt that it's the same as that like it's it's fucked up I should be able to tell a story, I should be able to share my experiences, I should be able to say whatever the fuck I want in my house, on my channel, to whoever the fuck I want. And I, I don't have a problem with that. If you can sh chat shit about me online and call me a piece of human garbage and say that I'm a terrible person because I don't think that you should spotlight your free speech campaign as a blasphemy campaign, then I can tell whatever the fuck stories I want to tell. And that's what I'm going to do. So I have a lot of topics to cover today. This is going to be a very long video. You probably know that already by the length of the video. But I have a lot of stories to tell. And it's going to be my sort of farewell to that community. And it's also going to be a cautionary tale for someone who wants to join the community. You know, I still do work with uh one ex-muslim or ex-religious rather group and um i've told them all of this already like every single every single thing that i'm going to mention here i've already told them and we're all good but i do think that this was the place that i was in and there are things that need to be improved there are things that need to progress and i don't understand how a group of people who are so insistent fighting for their rights fighting for equality fighting for their you know their own existence essentially in some countries would be so exclusionary and so bigoted towards others that's that's my whole you know if about the ex-muslim community in general and obviously i i can't really tarnish the, the whole group but i definitely hung out with the london group here and um i think that a lot of people who are who have gone out of their way to tell me that i'm a terrible person forget the fact that i have actually rubbed shoulders with these people i've traveled with these people to another country i've been to these people's houses i've been i've met them at parties i've met them at, in, at functions and engagements i was friends with them for over a year and i know them personally and i think that there's a difference between a lived experience and some tweets of appreciation online i just i just think that there's a difference and you know you can have whatever opinion you want about the people that i may or may not be referencing because again not mentioning any names but unless i actually absolutely have to uh but i <laughs> 
I just have to say, I just have to say that if you are going to join this movement, here are some things that you should watch out for and here are some things that you should fight for. Like if you're going to adopt this label, like I don't take labels very lightly. I take labels incredibly seriously because I am a very individualistic person. I, you know, I think that once I call myself something, I have an obligation to make sure that that is something that I want to be aligned with. And I have now decided that that movement is just not for me because I don't think that I can make the changes that I want to see. I just don't think that I can. Um, like I said, I still work with ex-religious groups and ex-religious people. I just don't align myself to that label and align myself to specific people who carry that label and are mouthpieces for that label. And I, I just, I mean, I'm going to give you all the reasons now. So let's talk a little bit about the big fiasco a couple of months ago, why I went on hiatus. Um, again, I'm not going to talk in specifics. I don't think that I need to. I think that everyone who's watched my channel this far and uh, for also follows all of these other people know exactly what I'm talking about blasphemy charge Tanzania you know what I'm talking about and I like I said I don't think I have to repeat anything that I've uh, that I haven't already said I've already said what I have to say about it I've already apologized for whatever I need to apologize for and I'm not going to do it again but from my end what it felt like and this actually happened many months before this that a lot of people just started disassociating with me because I fell out with this other person and it was this I, I always had this notion in my head that um you know this was my new family and this is very much a perpetuated idea among these people as well that these this group of people is their new family and um it just felt like it just felt like they treated me the exact same way that my biological family treated me and my biological family has the out of being like we didn't have a choice to have her you know like we didn't have a choice to adopt her she was just in our family and we hate her I can give them a pass for that but what I cannot give a pass for is that you took me in you called me your family you told me you would love me unconditionally and then you abandoned me as soon as I disagreed with all of you with all of you for the way that someone was behaving with their own partner, with the people around them, the way that they were treating vulnerable people, and you just let me go because you would rather hang out with them. And I honestly, I honestly don't know how you benefit from that relationship, but I guess, you know, that's your own personal choice. But to constantly preach about unconditional love and constantly reinforce the idea that you are my family and then to completely abandon me because I fell out with one other person is to me is just bizarre because the rest of my close friends had seen the same video they had seen the same thing and they did not think for a second of letting me go a lot of my friends criticized me also they didn't like what I did but they also did not abandon me they did not completely was like I just can't be your friend anymore because you did this one thing and I'm not saying that anyone in this world who comes across me and you know likes me has to stay in constant communication but when you constantly preach this idea of family and unconditional love and then you just let someone go because they don't adhere to your tribalistic idea of what life should be it it really fucked me up like i am doing a lot of internal healing i'm you know sort of healing my relationship with my own mind i'm healing my relationship with food i'm healing my relationship with sleep i'm healing my relationship with my artwork you know with my writing and stuff like that and if anything me being a part of this family has set me back so much that i almost regret doing this I don't regret it, regret it in the sense that it let me take a lot of the anger that I was experiencing in 2018 but I do regret the fact that my Muslim family were constantly telling me that these people are going to abandon me and these people don't actually care about me and these people um you know are just going to let me go as soon as it doesn't benefit them and for the life of me I wanted it to be false and unfortunately they were fucking right 
and I maybe I should have listened to them. Maybe I should have listened to my family and just been like, yeah, maybe maybe they will do that. But for the life of me, I did not think that it would happen. And it has in many stages. And these people did not fall out with me in March, by the way. These people cut me out long before March. These people cut me out like last year in July, probably, or slightly later than that. They just stopped talking to me. They stopped texting me. They stopped, you know, wanting anything to do with me. And it's just very very hypocritical and confusing. In addition to this, <laughs> after the fiasco happened, there was a lot of private backtracking. After so many people, so many people, figureheads in this community, had thrown me under the bus. They had blocked me, they'd thrown me under the bus, told, you know, the public that I had manipulated them, and I had, you know, completely you know, misrepresented the truth. They had either approached me or they approached Saf, who is who was another ex-Muslim activist for a while and is a close personal friend of mine, and completely backtracked and said that, you know, we know that Faye is correct, but we just can't take that position. Like, we know that you're right, but we just can't. For the movement, we can't take that position. And if they thought for a second that Saf was not going to tell that to me, like, I... Why are you idiots? <laughs> I'm so sorry, but why are you idiots so willing, so willing to sell your values down river for some fucking shekels, man? For some fucking shekels. I don't understand that. I've never understood that. Like, maybe my parents were not the greatest parents, but they raised a confident child, okay? I will never... For the life of me, I will never sell my own personal principles and values for some shekels, for some clicks, for some fucking pussy. Like, I will never. And the amount of backtracking that I heard from Saf and from my own DMs is fucking ridiculous. And, like, <laughs> y'all can act like friends. But you all know, you all know you have beef with somebody in the community and you have actual beef, actual problems that that person has called, actual problems that another person has caused that you are not willing to confront because you would rather sacrifice your principles, sacrifice your own personal values for some fucking pussy, man, for some fucking shekels, for some fucking views. Like, it's disgusting disgusting okay <laughs> like i just don't i just don't get that in addition to that the maelstrom of the uh backlash that i got that was i feel completely undeserved because a lot of people were just calling me unaccomplished fat and ugly came mainly from abdullah samir and harris sultan harris sultan who actually in his video said that i am a snake because i you know, reported my father. And actually, I remember a time when he was in London and um, we had met in Camden Town where we had this exact same conversation and he was trying to make excuses for my father who almost killed me in my house. This man knows exactly what happened to me and this man tried to make excuses for another man who tried to fucking kill me. What have I done? I'm sorry, Harris Sultan, you don't know me. Sultan baby, like you do not know me. But you tell me what I possibly could have done as a 17-year-old girl in her father's house looking after his five fucking kids. What I could have possibly done to cause him to fucking kill me. You tell me that, you you thick-headed fucking homunculus of a man like i do not understand where you get off saying anyone is a snake for reporting their family to the police for attempted murder and domestic violence i do not know where the fuck you get off saying something like that and abdullah samir bitch i have a samir i have seen what you have said about zara k so you making that video i have it in text i have it in writing the things that you have said about zara fucking k so the fact that you decided to go oh i never supported faye after she made that video and then include clips and make it seem like i was trying to get her deported 
like you didn't know exactly what was happening and in addition to that you were in contact with one of my closest friends that I know has spoken to you about this so I don't know why you continuously lied on me and then acted like I was I do not have the money to get someone deported Zara harassed me I told her to stop through the police and then she did not stop for another three weeks so I made that video instead of getting her deported. I saved her from getting her de herself deported because I did not want to go back to the police because a second reporting would have gotten her deported. So I made that video to shut her the fuck up and she did. So it f I, I don't know what you want from me. I do not know what you want from me. The only people that treated me with any humanity and actually did not abandon me after my big falling out earlier this year were Mariam Namazi, Sahil Ahmed and Ridvan from Apostate Prophet. Like those were the three people who were like, we get it. You don't want to be a part of this anymore. You still have us. Sahel still talks to me. Mariam wrote me a glowing reference for the recent job that I obtained. And Ridvan, I mean, his wife constantly checks on me. I do not need to agree on every single thing that a person says for me to respect them as a human being and keep them in my thoughts and love them unconditionally. I do not, I draw the line at, at bigotry, like actual fucking bigotry and mistreatment of vulnerable people. That's where I draw the fucking line and all of you ignored that after I told you about it, after you have seen it happen and it's disgusting it's disgusting people kept telling me there's something that i kept seeing is that Faye, you could never make it in the ex-muslim community after i fell out in earlier this year you could never make it some people are way prettier than you some people are skinnier than you you're fat and ugly and unaccomplished you could never make it in the ex-muslim community what the fuck are you talking about what the fuck are you talking about? I started my channel in October of 2018 and by January of 2019 I had a career in this space because what I have that a lot of people do not have is that I am compelling. I have a good fucking story and I know how to fucking tell it and there is no denying that I am fucking compelling. The interviews that I have done with plethoras of people, but people who now disagree with me, they have admitted that they are some of the best interviews that they have ever done of me telling my story about how I left Islam and found myself, okay? Fucking Faithless Hijabi hired me the first day she met me. First day. Even though she interviewed me and got me drunk for the interview because she thought that being drunk is how people really are, you know, which is incredibly predatory, by the way. But anyways, she hired me first day she saw me. I had a career. I worked with CEMB. I still work with Faith to Faithless. I, <laughs> I've been on panels. I've moderated conversations. I have interviews on interviews on interviews. I've hosted things. I've hosted a Ramadan mukbang in protest for places where the people can't eat in the daytime in certain countries because of Ramadan. I have been in campaigns. I have written statements for CEMB. I have volunteered so much of my time. I am in the movie that a lot of people are like, oh, I'm so glad they didn't take Faye out. They couldn't take me out, bitch. They could not take me out because I had the most, com one of the most compelling stories. I think some of the other stories were pretty compelling, but Mariam Namazi herself, the videographer of that movie himself has said that I am the star of that documentary. They could not take me out of that if they fucking wanted to. I have been in their campaigns, I have made statements, I have made news appearances. I was on Russia Today talking about No Hijab Day. I've been on the radio, I've been on BBC Asian Network talking about leaving Islam. What do you mean I couldn't make it? I did make it and I chose to leave. Because the bullshit that happens behind the scenes is honestly unacceptable. It is honestly unacceptable and the fact that people decide to say we don't need you that's fine i don't understand why you need to tell me that i'm aware you've made it clear you've made video on video on video on video about me about how i do not 
deserve a space here, but then continue to keep my story on your channels and collect whatever YouTube revenue you do from those. Like, <laughs> what am I losing? What am I losing? I left. How can you tell me that we don't need you after I've left? Fine. Why are you telling me that? I. It's just inconceivable. Like, honestly, I do not care if you keep those interviews up. It's more exposure for me, bitch. Like, keep them, keep them up. But if you virulently disagree with me, why would you keep them up? I think the only person who's actually taken down the interview that they had with me was Abdullah Samir. And even then, someone re-uploaded it onto the internet and has stated in the, in the description as saying that that was the best one that Abdullah Samir has done. You can sit there and you can delude yourselves as much as you want that I could not make it in the ex-Muslim thing, but I already did and I chose to leave. And this is just me tooting my own horn, but I made it even before the ex-Muslim stuff. I have two publications. I've been on a billboard in Wembley. I have, I, like, look it up. Look my name up. I made it and I chose to leave. And... I will not regret choosing to because I do not belong in this community of people and they've made it clear that I don't belong. And this is stemming from the fact that they, some of them hold incredibly bigoted opinions about very marginalized and very vulnerable people. Let's talk about transphobia, shall we? I'll tell you a story about transphobia. One day I was talking and this was like at the end of a party as well i was talking to one of my then friends about uh trans issues we, we were joking around and we got to the issue of trans issues and at this point i was still pretty ignorant about trans issues i didn't have a lot of trans friends um i had never really looked into trans issues and i honestly i sort of kept I didn't have an opinion, but I also didn't want to comment because I didn't know enough about it, you know? Like, I publicly did not want to comment on trans issues because I'm not trans, I don't know the experience of that, and I just feel like it would be really unfair for me to inflict my ignorant fucking opinion on trans people when I don't really know that many trans people, I hadn't researched into trans issues, and I didn't know anything about trans issues. I, I feel like that's a reasonable position to have, but I was having this conversation about um transitioning and this person and like it's not even that this person is like a fringe person this is a, a, a figurehead in the ex-muslim community this person had fully told me that trans women should not should not be allowed to accept or take use of serve of rape services because they the experience of being raped as a woman is not the same as being raped as a man with this wasn't a joke bad joke or not it wasn't a joke they were being entirely serious about this and it was fucking disturbing. What do you mean? First of all, trans women are women. Second of all, what do you mean being raped as a woman is not the same as being raped as a man? Rape is fucking rape. If you get raped, take take whatever you need to to heal from that. What what the fuck? Let's move on to something else. I don't think that needs expanding on. Secondly, the they them thing. Like, some people like to proclaim their pronouns as they, them. It's not an issue for me. As a literature student, I understand that language is constantly shifting, but this was the constant, like, it grammatically doesn't make sense. The word ex-Muslim doesn't make sense to some people. You want to talk about language and the development of language? Language constantly changes. You don't need to be a linguistic expert to know that language constantly changes. Look at Shakespeare. Look at Geoffrey fucking Chaucer. I studied him in literature. I'm, you know, an A-level literature student. I, I studied Shakespeare. I studied Geoffrey Chaucer. Language has come so far from there, all right? The, the terms that we use today, the word gay has changed meaning from, like, happy and joyful to gay. The word queer from being strange 
that's what queer meant to also being used as like an LGBT term. Different word, different language. Language has evolved. Get the fuck over it. Someone wants to be that to be their pronouns. Don't fucking argue with them. It's not. Fu it's not funny. It's not insightful. It's not even intelligent. Just. I don't understand why you have a problem with that. I, do, I still don't understand why people make this a thing. Like, just just be a decent fucking human being and let them have their pronouns. How would you like it? How would you like it if someone constantly referred to you as something that you did not want them to refer to you as? Just... It's such a dumb argument. Like, I by no means am an intelligent person. I am by no means the an expert in anything. If anything, I'm a jack of all trades and a master of nothing. I am a master of nothing. But it does not take a genius to understand basic human decency. Why would you argue with someone about that? Why would you ever say, ever say, that being raped as a woman is not the same as being raped as a man when talking about trans women who are, if not the most, the most marginalized group. They are the most marginalized group and like, how could you have such antiquated opinions about that? I just don't get that. Fix yourself, seriously. How do you constantly want to be accepted when you are the least accepting people? And this is not the only thing, by the way. We are going to get on to other things. But I know a person who is an ex-Muslim ally who was bullied because they used they, them pronouns, because they dated a trans person. Bullied. When they are going, they're not even ex-Muslim. They are just an ally. They go out of their way to support this movement. They go out of their way to, from the goodness of their hearts, just be a good person in that they understand our struggle and they just want to help us. And you bully them. You bully them into almost leaving the movement entirely. But they still haven't because they have a ginormous fucking heart. How can you, how can you do that? Let's move on to racial insensitivity, shall we? Let's, let's move on to racial insensitivity. I mean, you already know about the BLM fiasco. It's been beaten to fucking death. But let me tell you why the original conversation between me and like an, a, a group of other ex-Muslims about the BLM movement was taken down. It was because one of the people on the panel wanted it taken down because they were afraid that their racially insensitive comments might be, you know, picked up at work and they might, you know, suffer consequences for that. If you know that you are being racially insensitive to the point that you cannot say those opinions publicly for fear of losing your job, how does that not tell you that, that it's wrong to deny police brutality, to completely deny the existence of white privilege when you don't fucking understand it? Like, you know what you're saying is wrong because you're saying that if people caught wind of it, you would be in some way suffering for it. <laughs> you know what you're saying is wrong and you still hold those beliefs. I... <laughs> Let me explain what white privilege is really quickly as a sociology and psychology student, shall I? Let me explain what white privilege is in a nutshell. It has its roots in colonialism, okay? It does not it, it does not mean that you get to judge individual white people, but it's understanding that colonialism by British people, by European people, has made the lives of other people difficult because of colonialism. Bangladesh, the country that I am from, only separated from the fucked up shit that Britain did to India in the last like 80 or 70 years. So the things that happened then are still affecting people now. The, these are things that my grandfather went through. These are things that, you know, in the last two or three generations, people still remember vividly what happened. Like, as brown people, as brown people, 
who in the last two or three generations, maybe four generations, if we're, you know, including Gen Z, <laughs> you know, in the last two, three, four generations have seen firsthand the effect of colonialism and war and bloodshed that has happened because of the things that the British did in India, you should understand the basic concept of white privilege. The fact that some white people have an advantage in a social facet of life because of systematic oppression over hundreds of fucking years. Let's talk about Somali pirates. Why were the Somali pirates like a decade ago? Because the shores, the African shores, have been ripped clean of their fish that those people had to take up arms in order to feed their families. That is the result of systemic oppression. But we, the ignorant we, painted those pirates as the bad guys. And yes, maybe the things that they did were morally ambiguous, but at the end of the day, if you are doing it to feed your starving fucking family, it's like you don't live in the world. It's like you don't it's like you don't want to understand, want to understand where people are coming from when they talk about privilege. Like, I, I understand that some people take it to the nth degree and degrade people based on the color of their skin, white people. Yes, I understand that that happens, but to completely deny the existence of privilege is like denying gravity. It's like denying something so basic from a sociological standpoint. If you for a second think that, you know, a white person does not have an advantage over minority groups in this country, you are fucking fooling yourselves and I don't know what you gain from doing that. I do not know what you gain from doing that. But let's talk about a story I like to call brown deficiency. We were talking about white privilege. We were talking about white privilege. We were joking around. We were talking about white privilege. And um, it got to the point. It got to the point, And I had, I had posed the question because there was such denial of this principle of white privilege. And I had posed the question that do you think that instead of white privilege, that it is brown deficiency? And they all reared up and agreed that that is the correct term. Brown deficiency. You understand that the reason that we are disadvantaged, the reason, like, I don't know of... <laughs> My grandfather had to seek asylum in this country. He had to come here with nary a dollar to his name, nary a pound to his name. He sought asylum here, didn't know the language. And you are going to tell me that he is as privileged as your average white person. You are going to tell me, as a first generation immigrant who was constantly, constantly put in ESOL classes regardless of the fact that my English was perfect from when I was a child. You are going to tell me that that was fair treatment because I am, I'm a first-generation immigrant. I mean, the, the, even the fact that I am a first-generation ge immigrant was a point of contention for some people. I was not born here. I am a first-generation immigrant. <laughs> like, it's not hard to understand. It's really not that hard to understand. And the racial insensitivity just grows from there. Like, the... <laughs> The way that these people treat social issues is just so bizarre and so uncalled for and so insensitive. Like, maybe it's not racist, but it's definitely racially insensitive. I, some people collude those things. I just, I know that I'm going to get shit for calling them racists because they have been very defensive of the fact that they're not racists. But they are definitely racially insensitive. They definitely toe the line of being just straight up offensive to being like, oh, I'm just giving my opinion. It's not a good opinion. 
It's not a good opinion. It's not grounded in any kind of fact. It's not grounded in any kind of evidence. The, the existence of systemic oppression is very clear. It's very, very clear. In almost every facet of society, in healthcare, in education, in the justice system, in prisons, police brutality is definitely a racialized issue. We all watched, we all watched a man die because of the heinous actions of a fucking murderer, four fucking murderers, actually. And you're going to tell me that police brutality does not exist and privilege does not exist. The fact that you, some of these people can equate the word Karen to the N-word and the F-word that is used as a derogatory term for gay people. The N-word was used for hundreds of years to oppress black people. Karen is a meme that has probably already died out. Fuck you guys. Like, what the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? The N-word is still used to today to degrade black people and treat them as subpar, as subspecies of humans. And you are going to tell me that Karen is on the same level as that. Okay, Karen. Okay. Okay. You really made your moves here. It is the most uninformed opinion that I have heard in a very long time. Maybe since saying what I said before that that person said about trans women. Let's move on to the mental health discrimination. Bitch can't say anything. Bitch can't say a word. Bitch cannot say one thing without people going, Faye, are you taking your medication? Faye, are you still in therapy? What the fuck do you mean? Are you telling me that what I'm currently doing to take care of my own mental health is not enough? Are you telling me that you're clearly not concerned about me because every single thing that I tell you, you just say, oh, you're just imagining it. Or what if it's not like that? What if it's, I'm sorry, if I see one person abusing another person, regardless of their gender, they are abusing that person. You are not going to convince me that I'm just seeing things. It, that is called gaslighting. And those of you who are ex-Muslim figureheads and also licensed therapists should under fucking stand that. Those of you who work with vulnerable people, almost all of you work with vulnerable people on a day-to-day -day fucking basis should understand the basic concept of gaslighting. I did not see just imaginations. I do not need to go to therapy because I said that someone is abusing their partner. I do not need to g get an upper dose on my medication because someone else is abusing their partner and you don't want to fucking believe it. Or you just want to live in your bubble of, oh, they're a great person, they're a wonderful thing. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to rub shoulders with a bitch who abuses her partner. I'm not going to do that. And you can do that as much as you want. As much as you want. But you, ca you can't sit there and say that what I saw and what I felt, being a person from abuse, was imagined. There, every single time, every single fucking time that I say anything mildly controversial or mildly in disagreement with somebody, oh, Faye is out of her fucking mind. So she just brings her issues out on everybody. I'm sorry, you do not need to listen to a single thing that I say. YouTube, social media, Instagram is optional. You can easily mute me, easily block me, easily just eradicate my name from your feed. But you are choosing instead to use my mental health issues as a reason for why I'm fucking insane for just stating my opinion. And y'all want to work with, with vulnerable people. Y'all really want to work with vulnerable people. Stay the fuck away from them. Stay the fuck away from marginalized and vulnerable people. Stay the fuck away from them. They deserve better than you. They deserve people who are actually going to listen to what they say and believe them. Even if they don't believe them, don't call them fucking crazy for having an opinion. 
Let's talk about the times that people have been mistreated for being friends with me. Now, as I've said before, this falling out, this like slow, slow abandoning of me has happened a while back. This happened like last middle of last year. Let's just say that it happened in the middle of last year. And a number of people, mainly Saf and Sophia Little Devil, have been mistreated obscenely because of it, because they're friends with me, because they're friends with me. Little Devil herself requested therapy and was denied it because she's friends with me. Now, for those of you who don't know Little Devil, I've interviewed her on my channel, I've interviewed her on the Apostate Alliance. She is arguably one of the most vulnerable people in our community that is a public ex-Muslim and the, the mistreatment that she has faced for being my friend or defending me is ob fucking scene. How can you call yourselves activists when you deny vulnerable people care? How can you deny the most vulnerable public person in our movement care when she has personally requested it? And then blame her, blame her when she tells me about it because for no reason this person brought me up in the conversation. Of course she was going to tell me. She's my fucking friend. You idiot. And if you thought for a second that I was not going to go up to bat for her, you are a shitty fucking friend. If you thought for a second that I was not going to fight for her because you mistreated her, you are a fucking degenerate loser. Like, I don't understand how you can do that to somebody when you know exactly how they suff suffered. I don't know how you can do that. I don't know how you, you in good faith can do that to anyone, let alone someone that you know has suffered in this world and has personally requested care from you, regardless of the fact that she disagrees with you. But you still went out of your way to say, no, nope, your face friend, she's been doing damage to my fucking charity, so we can't help you. I thought you wouldn't want it because you're her friend. And the abuse that Saf has received, by the way. I thought bitch was crazy about me. Bitch went crazy on Saf as well. Saf, literally the most innocent human being on the planet. I can't think of a more innocent adult person. What did Saf do to you? What, she disagreed with you publicly? Oh, you're my friend. I have struggles. No one fucking cares. She disagreed with you. Get the fuck over it. Why did you treat her like she killed your mother or something? Like, <laughs> fucking ridiculous. These people will constantly say that I'm, you know, really sensitive and I'm this SJW bitch, but like, you wrote her like this seven page fucking message because she disagreed with you and then you blocked her because she upset you that much you also blocked me but we're glossing over that because we already know you crazy on me but i did not think i did i thought it was like isolated to me i did not think that you would do that to a person that you only met one time like <laughs> bitch only met this bitch one time and she decided to write this long convoluted letter about how heartbroken she was that saf publicly disagreed with her fuck you Fuck you. You're a race, racially insensitive rich girl who constantly complains about all your struggles of being a rich person. Like, <laughs> you and Jeff Bezos get a room and cry, bitch. Like, no one cares. No one cares that your maids talk shit about you. They wait on you hand and foot, probably get paid minimum wage. And you want to sit there and talk about how it's so hard being a rich girl and, and being stopped by the police because you're so rich and your maids talk shit about you. Like... Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! You were born into a life of privilege and you cannot acknowledge that. For the life of you, you cannot acknowledge that. Because you you don't for a second want to turn off your audience of hardworking people. I've never seen such a horrible example of humanity. <laughs> like... Seriously, you and Bill Gates and Epstein and Bezos just get one room and cry together like no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit that you are rich and your maids chat chatted shit about you one time. No one cares. No one gives a shit. 
Let's talk about misogyny and fetishizing ex-Muslim women. Here's something that genuinely, if you're an ex-Muslim woman and you want to join this movement, something you have to watch out for. There be white boys out there that just want you because you're an ex-Muslim brown girl and they think that they can control you because you came from a controlling environment. Be very, very aware of that. And in addition to that, just because ex-Muslim men have left religion does not mean they have abandoned their misogynistic culture. I have dated one too many ex-Muslim men and definitely met one too many ex-Muslim men that still hold on to their really misogynistic values example Harris Sultan for regardless of the fact that they've left religion be very very wary of that and be very very careful of that I'm by no means saying that every single ex-Muslim man is like this but it's definitely something that is not talked about and should be talked about more it's fucked up it's fucked up how misogynistic some men in this community can be and literally no one tells them off for it I've seen it happen and they, they will just talk over you if you confront them about it and no one will actually penalize them for it. Be careful. Be very, very careful about, about the misogyny that could exist in this community. I've faced it. I know people who faced it. I know people who've been fetishized by white men who are just looking for their brown girl who just they just want a subservient brown girl just be very very cautious about who you fraternize with because the level of misogyny is absurd it's stupid for a community of people who constantly oh we fight for women's rights we fight for equality really then why y'all just still the same why do y'all act the same? Why do you still not allow women to speak to you? Why don't you allow women to criticize you when you act like a dickhead? And why do you treat us like possessions? Tell me that. Tell me that. Why do you get to excuse my father who almost killed me, but you know, I'm the bad guy. Why, do, why does that happen? I'm a girl. I'm a girl who was early 20s, late teens, who almost got killed, but you're gonna make excuses for my father. Why? Because he's a man? Because he's the head of the house? Why? Tell me. You never really clarified that, Sultan. I would love to see your justification of that. Write me a thesis. Blast me on Twitter. Find me. Fucking dickhead. And then, like, he, he also, I have to talk about this, for, like, weeks, he was also just picking up any troll that was trolling him and being like, oh, Faye, ha ha ha, this is Faye. And those people would, like, screenshot his messages because he's just a paranoid fucking uncle. I don't want anything to do with you. I'm sorry. You're not worth my time. Honestly, the first time I met you, I had bad vibes about you in Amsterdam, and I just avoided you the entire time. Also, I was high out of my mind, which is also why I avoided you, because I, I was having a good trip and I didn't want to fuck it up. So, like, you are, you are the last person that I think of when it comes to the ex-Muslim community, because you are the last person... I didn't even really talk to you, I talked to you one time, and you decided to judge my whole life and make excuses for my murderous father. Well done. Well done. Rights for women. Equality. Rights for women. You know, we, the most feminist man in the, on the planet justifies, justifies that behavior. Let's talk about how lax some of these people are about the abuse against children. It's not a fun topic. It's not a fucking fun topic. Let me tell you where I come from, okay? I have been looking after children my entire life my entire life professionally if we include like voluntary service seven years professionally being paid five years i have my commitment in this world is taking care and educating children i feel incredibly strong about it and it does not make me feel good when people who constantly shit post about muhammad being a pedophile make excuses for pedophiles did they look like an adult? If an adult person fucks a child, it does not matter if the child look like, looks like an adult or presents themselves as an adult. The child is a fucking child. It is the onus of the adult to make sure who they are fucking. Oh, brilliant, you know, mind-blowing idea. 
I, and also, I just can't believe the person who said that to me is a parent who has kids. I don't think I need to expand on that. I think that's bad enough without any kind of expansion. I think it's bad enough without any elaboration on that. The same people who constantly and incessantly say that Muhammad is a pedophile, don't get it twisted, he is. But the same people, same people who constantly reiterate that honestly played out argument, make excuses for literal child abuse happening today. Disgust, disgusting, disgusting as a parent as well. How do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night with these kinds of thoughts in your brain? I could not sleep for like five days, five straight days. I could not sleep. I was losing my mind over this because I could not understand how you could think that as a parent to young children. Anyone who cares about kids and makes excuses for fucking pedophiles. What do you want me to say? How do, how do you, how do you square that? How do you square that? If a parent walked into the place that I worked and said something like that, we would probably have to make a safeguarding report. We have fired people for saying less than that. How dare you justify a grown adult taking advantage of a child? How do you justify that? And it's not like people don't know this. Plenty of people know this. But are they going to do anything about it? I guess, you know, the next few generations of ex-Muslims will have to square that because no one currently is going to do anything about it. I just, like, I can't get over that. That is, like, one of the biggest reasons why I fell out. You know what? With all of them. That's the biggest reasons why I fell out with all of them. It's so fucked up. And it is my biggest passion in life to educate children. And I do not understand like i can never be clean knowing what i know like about these people as in regards to this specifically i can never for the life of me be clean because th these are the people that i fraternize with that i rub shoulders with and they excuse pedophilia while also condemning it which is incredibly confusing it does not matter if a child is 6 or 16. It really doesn't. A child is a child. An adult took advantage of them and you dismissed it. As a parent. I hope you are proud. I don't know how you fucking sleep. I will never know how you fucking sleep. Because that knowledge still haunts me and I didn't do anything. If anything, I did the only right thing and reported it that I could do. That's the only thing that I could do. I reported it and no one has done anything about it. You, you're looking to join the ex-Muslim community? Please, please join and change the climate. Change these stupid ideas. Just change them. I was going to go on a political tangent, but honestly, I'm not very political. I'm pretty apolitical when it comes to most of my opinions. Pol politics honestly confuses me and I can't be fucking bothered to get into why it's so wrong to support far-right politics, but I'm seeing a lot of Israel hype in the ex-Muslim community and it's very off-putting. There is absolutely no nuance in this argument that they have portrayed and it's... How do y'all sleep? How do y'all sleep? What kind of denial exercises do you have to do to be transphobic, racially insensitive, justifying child abuse, fetishizing Muslim, ex-Muslim women, being misogynistic, denying service to vulnerable people, and 
just being this. How do you square that? How do you sleep? How do you eat? How do you live your lives? What kind of mental gymnastics do you have to do in order to square all of that away? Because for me, that is a lot of fucking baggage that I just... That's why I left. That's why I left. I'm going to conclude this. This is all the information, I think, that you need for anyone looking to join this movement. Honestly, if you want to join it, I say join it. But join it with the intention of changing the, the behavior and the, and the backward ass ignorance. Like these people are so scientific. These are not idiot people. These are intelligent people who constantly listen to like intelligent podcasts, who listen to philosophy, who read books. These are intelligent people who choose to be ignorant. And there is nothing in this world that is worse than that. At least in my opinion, it's one thing to be ignorant. It's one thing to be an idiot. It's one thing. It's another thing to choose ignorance when you have knowledge. If you're looking to join this community, here is a cautionary tale. Here are the things that need to be worked on. I cannot. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I cannot rub shoulders. I cannot fraternize with racially insensitive people. I cannot fraternize with transphobes. I cannot fraternize with victim blaming child abusing people. I cannot fraternize with people who abuse their partners. I cannot fraternize with people who deny care to vulnerable people. I cannot. But if you choose to, these are the things that need changing. These are the things that need progress. And I wish you the best of luck. I wish you the best of luck. People still approach me today, like, what do I need to know about threats? The only time that I have felt in any way upset about my condition as an ex-Muslim person has been in the case, like, when receiving just poor, poor responses from other ex-Muslims who I considered my family. There could be thousands of 15-year-old, you know, people who call me fat ugly on the internet, it wouldn't brush me sideways. But the very fact that these were the people that I was rubbing shoulders with, and the fact that people I've known longer, I kind of took for granted, eats at me every single fucking day. They were never my family, and I never should have taken them in as my family. I never should have bought the lie that they would care about me unconditionally when they do not, save for like the three people that I mentioned earlier in this video. I cannot. I cannot rub shoulders with people who will make a mountain out of a molehill, but then also just justify all of these ridiculous injustices. Who will be so free to marginalize people when they themselves are marginalized people. You'd think they'd be able to relate, but they choose not to. And something that I would also like to warn you about is that literally everyone in the ex-Muslim community has beef with another ex-Muslim person or an ex-Muslim figurehead. Literally every this facade of them being a family is a facade. I've heard it. Saf has heard it. Everyone in the ex-Muslim community who is in the know, who has met these people, who has been around these people, everyone knows that every single ex-Muslim figurehead has beef with another ex-Muslim for one reason or another, but they will not confront it because they would rather just collect their shekels at the end of the day and call it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you are upset by this. I am sorry if you think that I'm just a big fat ugly liar and that's all. But this has been my experience in the ex-Muslim community with a couple of organizations and I can't do that anymore. I can't do that anymore. I still work with Faith to Faithless. I'm going to be doing some events with them, but I will not be using the ex-Muslim label because again, I cannot fraternize with bigots and people who are going to just abuse and take advantage of vulnerable, vulnerable people. I just can't do it. It makes me so angry to the point where I make mistakes and then like I'm painted as a bad guy, not because I was wrong, 
but because I made those mistakes. I can't do it. It makes me so upset and so angry and I don't think that I am to blame for feeling the way that I do and I don't think that I am wrong for sharing what I'm sharing now. I think that my experience is valid and anyone who wants to adopt this label and become a public speaker for this movement should know these things. They should be aware of the, the disgusting behavior that goes on behind the scenes with these people and the way that they will just cut you out if you disagree with them even slightly. The way that they will bully you if you're trans. The way that they will deny, deny the fact that you are marginalized and you are mistreated when the world is the way that it is. I don't know how better to say it. From now on, I want to focus on my own individualism. I like used this analogy a couple of days ago with some of my kids because they were asking about North Korea and South Korea. But like South Korea is so vibrant and so colorful and has such a rich, like colorful culture because of the oppression that North Korea is like it continues to be and I came from an in incredibly controlling environment and now all I want to do is focus on my own individuality and that's all I want to do that is all I want to do I don't want to sit around and shit post about Islam 24 7 like some of these people do I don't want to sit around and shit shit post about Muslims 24 7 like some of these people do I don't want to do that I want to talk about my life, I want to talk about the things that I've been through and I just want to grow into the person that I'm meant to be and regardless of what you say, whether or not I, you think that I can make it, you don't get to say, you don't get to have a say in what I am and what I can be. I know that I am an artist, I am an incredibly versatile person, I made it before I found this community and I will continue to make it after I've left this community. I know that I am a compelling person. I know that I am an interesting person. And no one, and I also know that I am a good person. Maybe you don't think that. Maybe you think that I am a garbage human being, but I know, I know that I am a good person. And that's all, that's all. Nothing you say, nothing you have to comment about this is gonna change that. If anything needs changing, it's your attitudes and the things that you have in your head that you think you are justified to feel in for some fucking reason. I don't know where you got it from, but you have it and it's fucked up. Change it or die with the past. Figuratively, obviously. Because those ideas do not belong in an inclusive world. They don't. They do not belong in a world where children are meant to be protected, where vulnerable people are meant to be taken care of. They don't belong here. That's all I have to say. I'm going to be posting in June. I have some LGBT content planned. If you liked this video, like it, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. If you hated it, dislike and fuck off. Don't leave your comment. Do you want to comment? Comment on a public platform. Don't comment here. This is my house. I'm going to moderate my comments. Um, the, the world of me allowing haters to say whatever they want, that's over. That's finished. I'm not doing that anymore. You leave a, a dumb fucking comment, it's going to get removed. You see it happen, don't fucking complain about it. You got something to say about me, say it on Twitter. I'll see you next time. Have a lovely week. Except for those of you that are fucking pedophile apologists, because what the fuck? Seriously. <laughs>